So this is like day 22. We've been at this for three weeks and my, my attention span is not that long for anything. I, I can't believe I'm still here and I can't believe you're still here. And we are doing something awesome and different and totally cool today. But before we get into that, I am Mrs. Open Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for 365 days of soap. Now today, on day 22, right? Yeah, we are doing something a little bit different. So we, instead of making like a proper pour of, you know, a batch of soap, what we are doing is we are doing a clay soap test. Now the reason for that is I get questions all the time, Mrs. Soap and Clay, what are clay soaps? And I'm going to tell you what they are and not only am I going to tell you what they are, we are going to test five different types of clay that you can put into soap and have a bar of soap that has no clay whatsoever in it and we are going to test them all and see you know what the lab qualities and everything are like for each of them and I'm super excited to do this because you know it's very scientific and it's a lot of fun and I really geek out in the sciencey aspect of all of this so you know I'm going to stop talking, you're going to read my shirt because it's awesome and cool and like science related and then we're going to go do the thing. Let's go. How's it going guys? We are back for day 22 and we are doing a clay soap test today. Now we are doing a clay soap test because we are always talking about you know clay soaps and how awesome they are and I want to show you you know kind of the difference between different clays and um, what they do with the lather and all the cool stuff as opposed to, you know, just a regular artisan bar soap. So what we have going on from left to right, we have one teaspoon of each. We have a kaolin clay in the left one. We put one tablespoon of water in there. And you see how nicely that mixes up? It's very lightweight clay. Now kaolin clay is really great for lots of uh, sensitive skin issues. Now this one, this is the bentonite clay. And you see how we put one tablespoon of that into one teaspoon of the bentonite. And you see how clumpy it got? Like, that's that's a lot. That's because bentonite actually absorbs a lot of moisture. It is a definitely a, a power clay as far as that is concerned. And so it's really great for, you know, super big problems like, you know, ac acne and eczema and stuff like that. Now, this third one here, this is a Dead Sea clay. And it mixes sort of like a cross between the kaolin and the bentonite. Again, one tablespoon of water put into that one. Now, next to that, we have the red clay. Now, red clay is really good for inflammation, for, you know, eczema and psoriasis, that sort of thing. And as you can see, it's a rather lightweight one as well, mixes much like the kaolin. And then the fifth one we have is the activated charcoal. Now, activated charcoal is an incredibly lightweight clay. It's very, very powdery. And so it mixes well with water, with oil, with, you know, just directly into your soap batter. It's great. And it is a wonderful clay for detoxifying the skin, for helping retain your skin's moisture. There are all kinds of awesome uses for the activated charcoal. And we are going to, at this point, first we're gonna put a little bit more water into the bentonite to make it easier to work with. But at this point, we are actually going to make a batch of soap and pour each of these uh, clays into the batch individually, weigh them out, measure them out for a bar. So we have, you know, the, the one standard there of the exact same soap recipe with no scent, no anything, 
just to see exactly what these clays do to the lather. So we are looking at the lather properties as well as the firmness of the bar. I, again, I only make clay soaps. I have a component of clay soaps in my line in every single soap that I make. Lots and lots of clay in every single soap that, that I put into the line because I believe clay soaps are you know far superior to anything else I've ever made before. And yeah, like I actually took it to one of my chemist friends after I was making clay soaps and we had this cool discussion as to why you know clays were doing such cool things to you know my, my soaps. And I was hooked at that point and I really won't ever go back to just a standard bar without the clays. Now we are going to sort of apply the scientific method to our soaping today and the recipe of the actual batter is going to be our constant, right? So we mixed one batch of soap up and it is my basic three blend that I use for the majority of classes at the soap shop. So it is olive oil, palm oil, and coconut oil in equal parts and we are going to use that for every single soap that we're making. We are weighing out an amount of that to into each of the beakers that have the prepared clays already in them. And so the different types of clays are going to be our variables, really. And that's the thing that we're gonna sort of change. And then we also are going to have something to test off of, which will be the soap batter without any clays in them. And again, we don't have any, any scents, any essential oils, any fragrances, any colors, any anything in this stuff, we are just going to test the performance of the clay and what that does you know, to soap. So we have done the kaolin clay and this is now the bentonite clay that we will be mixing up. And remember how clumpy it was? It's less clumpy because I put an extra tablespoon of water into the that clay blend. So it'll be a little bit easier to incorporate, but I'm not super duper trying to incorporate the bentonite in a you know proper way throughout all this. So it's still probably going to be a little bit clumpy at the end. And that's not the way I would normally use bentonite. Normally I would I would actually, you know, sort of disperse the the bentonite clay into an oil instead of a water to get rid of the, the clumpiness altogether. But you know again for this test we, we want to keep everything reasonably you know, the same. And this one is going to be the Dead Sea Clay. And we will mix the, the soap up into the Dead Sea Clay. And I, I really love Dead Sea Clay in a soap. I don't talk about it a lot on the channel, but I certainly use it a lot. I definitely use it for, you know, face bars as well as, you know, shower bars because it has just such a nice, beautiful lather to it and Dead Sea Clay is a very detoxifying clay that is actually a lot easier to use than the bentonite. And it doesn't do crazy overly drying things to you know your skin like you would get with a bentonite. And honestly, bentonite is the only one that actually has any problems with drying the skin. None of the other ones do. It actually, the, the opposite is true. It actually helps your skin you know retain more moisture. Clay soaps are Oh God, clay soaps are so cool. They're, they're amazing. I'm actually shocked that, you know, I've been doing clay soaps for several years now and it still has not become a thing um, in the sort of you know, soap making world. And I'm very surprised that more soapers aren't doing this. They, they should, they, they honestly should. It's again, creating a really, really good bar that has a big, beautiful lather right off the top. That's nice and hard. It has a longer shower life. It helps balance your skin's pH. It has detoxifying properties. Like the the benefits of clay are just they're so good. I'm surprised that more soapers aren't using clays, and they should. This here is the red clay. Now red clay in soap is uh, kind of awesome. It's kind of a combination between the uh, the kaolin and the bentonite. So definitely it removes impurities and helps with you know acne prone and oily skin and without being again overly drying like you can experience with the bentonite from time to time. So I love using red clay. Anytime that you see red in my line, there's definitely some red clay within the, uh, the, the batch too. And activated charcoal, that is, God, activated charcoal is cool. It's, it's such a cool, 
thing to put into soaps. It's it's detoxifying. It's moisturizing. It's uh, slightly exfoliating. It has a big, beautiful, amazing lather. It helps your skin retain its own moisture. Like it's it, it's kind of amazing. So that's one of the reasons. If you actually look at my line and you see how many black soaps I have, that's why. I love me some Activate Charcoal. I love me some Kaolin Clay, love me some Activate Charcoal, and I put both in my soaps all the time. And yeah, so that's gonna be the final clay bar that we put in. And then the last bar that we're gonna put into you know, the cavity there is going to be just regular soap. So this is just the saponified oils of olive, coconut, and palm with nothing else in them. So no additives, no scent, no essential oils, no no anything, no clays. So we have a sort of, you know, this is going to be our, our, our constant here, this is going to be our tester to see if, you know, any of these soaps are any different, the clay soaps versus, you know, just a regular, or a regular soap, really. Now these are going to not be put through gel phase. We are not going to see pop them. We are going to just let them sit and do their thing so you can see what a clay soap does and how quickly it hardens uh, within a, a, a 12 hour period because we will be actually unmolding these tomorrow morning and then testing them. And it is test day. So these have sat just out on the counter overnight and we are going to pull each of them from the mold and kind of look at their consistency. And the kale and clay, it's it's good. It's very smooth. It's a nice bar. It's a little soft, but not overly so. But now look at the bentonite. Now this has more to do with the fact that we had an extra tablespoon of water into this soap than anything else, right? So we had one tablespoon of each of the clays, but this guy had two tablespoons of water, and he's legitimately sticky. And there are some very real bentonite, you know, marks there, which can be confused with sort of like a lie heavy bar, but that's not what's going on. And the Dead Sea Clay, it's beautiful. It's going to be as firm as the Kaolin Clay Soap. And so is the uh, the Red Clay. It's gonna be a very similar consistency. So it's reasonably firm, you know, 12 hours later. It's not bad. Now, the Activated Charcoal, that's probably the hardest bar we have so far. The Activated Charcoal bar is the firmest and it is the, you know the closest to essentially no longer losing water weight they will all lose water weight for the next few weeks and then that's going to be you know our standard there that's going to be the nothing is in it at all bar and it is actually reasonably soft right now now we are going to do something kind of weird for this because I want to test the lather and I this soap is 12 hours old so I'm not going to put my direct hands in it because it can be very like really, really fresh soap can be kind of rough on your hands, and I don't really want to, to do the thing. So we're gonna we're gonna do the test with my gloves, and we might do another test in a couple weeks and see how the lather sort of changes because it does change a little bit. It's going to get sort of better, but you see, the Kaolin it has some nice bubbles to it. Those are some effervescent bubbles. They're very tight. It's a nice consistency. It's very moisturizing to the skin as it's uh, you know doing its thing, and the bubbles happen you know almost immediately. Now for the bentonite bar, this is going to be a. Uh, we'll stop for a minute so you can watch the thing. There between my like thumb and my my forefinger, you see the lather building up. It's a much creamier lather than what we got with the Kaolin, right? That is. Definitely good for a bar for like, you know, shave soaps and stuff like that because it has a, a creamier lather that will sort of sustain itself and hold up on its own longer. Now, the Dead Sea Clay. This is a cool combination between the lather of the Kaolin and the lather of the Bentonite. So you have the nice big sort of foam going on that you see from the Kaolin. Like, isn't that delightful? That's a really good lather. And again, this is within just a few seconds of manipulating the bar. And my biggest problem with artisan bars was you would have to start lathering and working with them for a good 20 to 30 seconds before you built a proper lather. And I don't like that. So when I tested my first batch of clay soaps, oh god, that's that's lovely. That's that's a very effervescent lather. And it just gets better over time. As it continues to cure, the lather will, you know, find its place and it just get becomes, you know, kind of bigger 
And um, yeah, so the thing that I hated about the regular artisan bars was that it would take a while to get the lather going, and I didn't, I didn't like that. I wanted to make sure that my my soaps would bubble in all types of water conditions and right away, so you're not having to overly work the bar because that's you know essentially using more product. Now, actually, charcoal. This is this is a good guy. He's a he's sort of creamy like the bentonite, but he has a lot of the uh, extra bubble like you would expect the Palin to have and it's just it's such a detoxifying lather it's very bubbly and awesome now this guy I'm actually having to work a little bit harder and I'm having to work him longer to get some kind of lather now this is the one that has no play at all and for me that's just too much work for not a lot of gain and you know there it is there's the five clay soaps plus one that's not you let me know which one you like best in the comments isn't it crazy how much the lather changed from batch to batch just depending on what types of clay we used? That is one of the reasons why I use clay in all of the soaps that I make. It's a really extraordinary additive to put into a bar of soap to make sure that you get a big beautiful lather right off the bat. Now the kaolin is personally my favorite followed by the activated charcoal but you know the red clay and the dead sea clay those are definitely my close seconds and then you have the bentonite clay which is used for you know to cream your lather it definitely is more stable and it holds up on itself better and that's used for you know things like shave soaps and stuff like that but all clays have a use in my line somewhere so if you see a white bar of soap you know it has kaolin clay in it if you see red in any bar of soap you know it has red clay if you see black activated charcoal, green, dead sea, or benic, it goes on and on. So yeah, that was a really fun experiment for me to do. I hope that you had fun with it as well. You know, if you did, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Subscribe, follow us, that would be awesome. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I really appreciate you being here. If you are interested in clay soaps, you can find them on the website at soapandclay.com. Literally every bar of soap, all of them. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find me at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and yeah, thanks so much. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.